Greetings, Excellencies. A warm welcome to all our Excellencies. A fabulous day, a wonderful day. Really, today I am personally very happy because our voice is heard by our government of India, New Delhi. Today evening, we received a message from our Union Home Minister, Sri Amit Shahji's office. They inquired about uh, our work, our efforts, the way we are doing this uh, World Peace Summit. And uh, we are expecting by 18th, by the day valedictory ceremony happens, we are expecting to receive a summit, uh, an endorsement message, a World Peace message from His Excellency, our Honorable uh, Union Home Minister. That would be so great because uh, recognized, already we are being recognized internationally, nationally, but it is something different getting a message from Prime Minister of India or Home Minister of India because they are the uh, biggies of our nation, like parents. So if you are endorsed by them, that would be so great. So we are expecting so. But anyway, our voice is heard. So that is very important, whether we get uh, an endorsement or whether we get peace, that is different. But anyway, our voice is heard and the concern is really uh, we have received so far 100 endorsement letters regarding this world peace. We are going to publish a Sauni because this year 50, last year 50, and uh, another short images, it counts nearly 100 plus. So anyway, we promote all the peace messages, uh, nearly 100 messages, 100 messages through letters and some videos. Because next after the summit, uh, we are go, uh, we prepare the savanis, we prepare our messages and the leaders' messages, government's messages, chief ministers' messages, governors' messages, and all these messages. We are going to make a savanid, and uh, that savanid uh, should be read by all the uh, nations. Uh, it's it's something like uh, some exaggeration, but uh, we'll make things happen because uh, whenever we say something would happen, people will take it as a silly thing. But uh, really, whatever the things we mentioned, we already proved. So certainly the day will come when our messages will be read by world leaders and uh, we'll get when we'll get invitations to international platforms to again uh, reiterate the messages that uttered on uh, World Peace Summit uh, 2023 platform. So today it is a great uh, gesture from our uh, government of India. Really, we are honored and blessed. So that is the one thing. And second thing is, uh, I welcome you all uh, to the third day of World Peace Summit. It's a beautiful day because a fabulous, a marvelous, fantastic leaders are here. <laughs> having their presence in this program, really we are so much honored. So without uh, doing any further ado, uh, further delay, uh, I invite you once again to the third day of World Peace Summit which is very crucial because without health, we are nothing. You may have crores of rupees, but if you don't have health, then you, we are zero. So it's a very crucial thing that we are supposed to focus on, that we have right people with us today to focus on these things. Before that, I invite my partner, Managing Director of Digital Humanity United International Royal Council and the President of this World Peace Summit 2023, Professor Dr. Vijay Kalil, ma'am, to focus on salient features of our Royal Council, then we'll invite our guests. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, my voice is not uh, perfect. I'm a little bit, I'm suffering from throat infection. It was suddenly arised. I'm Dr. Carly, Managing Director, Chairman of the Life Foundation. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the dignitaries who gathered and excellencies, kings, queens, global leaders. Namaste from India. Uh, Vishwa Humanity United International Royal Council is working mainly on the upliftment of the vulnerable, the underprivileged society, people who are under below poverty line. We have two organizations under Vishwa Humanity United International Royal Council. And the main concept of Vishwa Humanity is world peace, as peace has to be attained in the minds of the people that will be carried to every house from family to the society, society to the nation, nation to the global 
So we want global peace. So that is our main motto of this Vishwa Humanity United International Royal Council. That is the main concept of developing this organization. We want to tie up with the international organization who focus on the mainly underprivileged society. And we want to develop infrastructure and see that, uh, that uh, poverty at our level, we try our best level to be eradicated. And if we eradicate poverty and develop education, there will be peace in the minds of the people with mental wellness. And Kala Parishad, which is under the umbrella of Vishwa Humanity United International Royal Council, mainly focus on the culture diversity. We believe in diversity in unity and also shown solidarity for the farmers as farmers are the main backbone of our country as we depend on agriculture. And food is the main product which helps the human being to survive and to meet the demands of the growing population. Farmers are only sole support for us. So solid, uh, this, uh, Vishwa, the, uh, sorry, Kala Parishat has shown solidarity to the farmers and supported the farmers when they are in need and also conducted many cultural campaigns and programs which bring awareness in the minds of the society, the importance of cultural diversity in unity. And the Life Foundation, I'm the chairman, we focus mainly on, we have adopted 55 acres of slum in Saidabad colony, that is called a Singarini colony, slums. And we find all the vulnerable people who come from different parts of the India gathered there and working as uh, daily laborers, auto drivers, and they're mainly addicted to the bad habits. And though they have come to Hyderabad and uh, staying in slums to support the family, but they're not supporting. Only women are working hard and supporting the family and seeing that their children will be educated. So they join different schools. Uh, private schools are, at their level they join but when I have been to slum I noticed uh, there is a rape case that is a six years girl has been raped and I understood uh, I inquired what is the problem then the girls are left the boys young boys are left in the slums and uh, so we felt that they have to be placed in a protected zone and we have set up educational centers we believe education only can bring all around development and also upliftment. And we have set up study center, one study center in the year 2020. And now it is moved on to third study center, started with 30 children. And now it is 150, raised to 150. And still more demands are high. I'm receiving everyday calls that to increase the number of study centers where all the girls and boys of different parts of the slums in different areas has to be protected. So uh, we support them only through our salary. So uh, that I, that I can proudly say that and uh, dedicating my salary for the service of the mankind and humankind. So in this way, uh, we are supporting children and they're protected. Now we are not noticing uh, any rape cases or un un unwanted incidents in the slums. And though the male are uh, engrossed with their own bad habits, like drug addicted, drunk, and they will be coming to the slums. But 5.30 to 8.30, the women who complete their works and they take the children from our protected zone, that is from our study center to their houses and they're protected. In this way, we're importing education, developing awareness, what is bad touch, good touch, and also we are protecting them from the vulnerability. So, and the woman has came forward and said that we have to be empowered. Then we have started the tailoring center with two sewing missions, now raised to eight sewing mission. 30 women have been learned trained this trailering and they started their own. In this way, at our level, we are supporting the servant mates and we see that children of the servant mates get education. And also we are joining them in a government sector institutions like Telangana uh, Social Welfare. I, I have worked long back in the, the AP Social Welfare Residential Schools and uh, good communication with them and seeing that the entrance will be written and they're joining it, government sector. In this way, they can have free education from fifth class to degree level. So in this way, uh, Vishwa Humanity United International Royal Council works for the welfare of the society, vulnerable at whatever level, and seeing that mental well-being, physical well-being will be attained by these. And uh, 
we are seeing peace is prevailed in the minds of the vulnerable at our level. We are trying our best level. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. That's so wonderful. Thank you for the inspiring message that uh, Lawi Foundation is contributing and uh, Royal Council is contributing and uh, Telangana Kala Parshat is contributing. Thank you so much. And uh, now we'll go to the day, third day. We are talking about the health and well-being, which are very crucial uh, for our lives. Because out of 17, if you want to enjoy everything everything on this planet earth, planet earth the first thing for the first quality or first qualification that we require is health so without which we can't do anything so for that uh, we have special special guests chief guest uh rania lampuji ministry of education and uh, religious affairs she is from greece as an international speaker educationist she has been doing in multiple areas serving, especially if you see on social media platforms, she is creating so much of impact, huge impact, creating a lot of awareness on social issues. We welcome Her Excellency Rania Lampuji to throw some light on SDG3. Over to you. Greetings from Greece. Thank you very much for the lovely introduction, Dr. Raja. Uh, it's a great pleasure and honor for me uh, to be invited in this uh, great event. I would like to congratulate all the organizers for setting up uh, such a significant conference. And uh, of course, uh, I want to thank you for the invitation. My topic will be health and well-being in schools. Why? Because well-being, as well as health and nutrition, are very important education. Healthy children and adolescents are better learners and they become healthier and more productive adults. So good mental health will be are essential for school students. They uh, help them to learn effectively, to cope with day-to-day -day challenges and develop into resilient young adults. Therefore, investing in health, nutrition, and well-being is as important as investing in education programs, facilities, and teachers. This means that the resources and education expenditures must substantially increase. So what is well-being in schools? Well-being is a broad concept that covers a range of psychological and physical abilities, emotional, physical, social, workplace, societal well-being, uh, physical activities and sports, food and health, substance use or use, relationships, sexual health and parenthood. Unfortunately, school well-being is often overlooked, um, but it's crucial for teachers and students. Uh, it's been shown to have a positive effect on school climate, on student achievement, and teacher retention rates. There are many factors that um, contribute to school well-being. Uh, I think the most important are the school culture, uh, the teacher support, and the student engagement. A school with positive culture creates an environment where everyone feels valued and respected. Teachers who feel supported by their colleagues and administration are more likely to be engaged in their work and create positive relationships with the students. And students who feel connected to their school and classmates are more likely to be engaged in learning and thrive academically. Because you know that the formative years of childhood and uh, adolescence are crucial to the development of long-term um, attitudes towards someone's well-being, the lifestyle preferences. Young people uh, acquire social and emotional competencies and behaviors in the classroom that support resilience development. Therefore, a framework needs to be established for managing their physical and mental health. So helping kids um, uh, feel that they cherish as individuals, that school life has meaning and purpose for them is the first step in addressing student well-being at school. This can be done in a number of uh, many ways. Uh, schools should be able to give all members of the school community the chance to take part in meaningful decision-making, create a friendly environment where everyone can feel supported by participating in uh, authentic activities, and effective teaching strategies could, of course, contribute to a positive uh, classroom climate and well-being. Schools also provide health meals, health services, information about diseases, healthy way of living, which is very important for the health improvement of students and their families. And of course, this could protect the students from infectious diseases by teaching them the basics about the prevention of infectious diseases. 
so the use here of available evidence plays a crucial role in decision making. Uh, mental health is a big part, a big part of well-being, and um, developing the mental health in children and young people is about, about supporting them to be self-aware enough to find well-being strategies that help them develop positive mental health. Unfortunately, many children and young people do not know how to develop well-being, and uh, they have uh, no a few strategies for positive mental health. Um, this is known as languishing. No, languishing is a term in um, psychology, which describes a lack of mental health. Languishing typically marks a decline in our mental health, uh, although we can still function in our day-to-day -day life. Um, it's a state that can leave us um, a neutral or flat mindset where we have few strong emotions. Um, so uh, the lack of strategies for mental health has been exacerbated by the COVID pandemic. This is important because children miss to school, recreational activity, social engagement, uh, with remote learning. So research shows that um, uh, children suffer uh, since the COVID pandemic until now for many health and safety disorders, such as depression, anxiety, stress, post-traumatic stress, and the mental health also care uh, is not available to those who need it most of. Um, the earlier this is done, the better for prevention and improved prospects for the future generations. And the best way to do this is schools, as most uh, children spend most of the time in school. So schools can act not only as a protective factor to prevent the onset of mental health problems, but they can also become a well-being intervention by embedding a whole school approach to mental health and well-being. Uh, this is very important. So what we can do, there are a number of things that uh, schools can do to support mental health and well-being. First of all, educators can provide information, resources on coping with stress, anxiety, and depression. They can teach um, well-being strategies, create safe and supporting environments where students can feel comfortable when they discuss their mental health uh, issue. It's not easy to uh, uh, make uh, children um, uh, open themselves. Schools can promote positive thinking and resilience by teaching strategies for positive mental health. To promote campaigns, like in Europe, we have a Children's Mental Health Week, a Mental Health Awareness Day, I think it's a worldwide day, uh, that help reduce the negative stigma. Uh, it is important to make sure that students um, have regular opportunities to talk openly about mental health and um, support them to better understand their mental health, how to take care of it, and how to talk about it. So encourage more open discussions. Uh, this can help break down any stigma around mental health. Uh, so it's important also to have uh, senior mental health in the class, if it's possible, to provide always continuous professional development opportunities for uh, staff and like educators on mental health, engage with parents, I talked about the whole school approach, uh, gives students regular opportunities to talk and uh, um, uh, always encourage them to look after their uh, own mental health. Um, and uh, um, this is um, important, uh, this is related to positive education. Positive education is applied positive psychology within educational settings. And this involves self-awareness, how to, to help the children, how to support them to increase their, uh, their self-awareness, their self-reliance, their ability to focus, uh, their positive, optimistic outlook, um, and uh, the emotional literacy and the communication. In Greece, what happens in Greece, in my country, spending on education is low, but the European Union now provides um, um, uh, investments, more significant investments and reforms the Greek education, so Greece is making considerable efforts to modernize our levels of education, of course, needs to um, adopt a more comprehensive policies to ensure the well-being of schools and teachers. Um, on actions which promote quality of school life and personal development in schools. Uh, and this can labs, um, this contains better living well-being, some thematic sessions, environmental consciousness, interest in that kind of creation and innovation. It, this initiative of Greece was awarded in the European Union. 
And we also offer, uh, we have many health school meals projects. Uh, health school meal project help strength and solidarity in the companionship in the school community. In Europe in general, uh, there are groups who enable governments to share health and economic analysis of policy ideas to um, identify all the gaps and support health in all policies. And uh, for concluding, we'd say some, um, I mentioned some important projects, search, search is a research-based positive education framework that helps schools to develop intervention, uh, a whole school uh, curriculum, a well-being curriculum. And um, the access of this, uh, the pathways are strengths, relationship, hope, and resilience. Uh, another European uh, Union funded project is School School for Change, which sees schools in maze are catalysts for systemic change on a broad um, society level. The WISE project, another project which promotes well being and student life within the European higher education field. And of course, let's not forget uh, what happens with neuroeducation. I'm a neuroeducation researcher, and during the pandemic, I wrote an article about this how cognitive neuroscience can uh, help us. Um, deal with uh, the challenges of mental health by promoting and creating positive emotions in classroom, etc. So before concluding, I want to say that mental health promotion is a mandatory key learning goal in 21st century education. We need to integrate mental health and well-being into the formal curriculum of pedagogy if it is possible. We need to adopt a systemic whole school approach. We need a bottom-up participatory approach, including a representative student voice, involve the whole school community, Prioritize education of teachers in mental health and well-being according to their needs and strengthen evidence and evidence-based practice. Because now humanity has faced health and other kind of crisis, we know what happens with the COVID pandemic. So mental and physical health of learners are being challenged and with the knowledge um, and uh, all uh, these uh, strategies that I mentioned before, we can overcome the challenges and obstacles and we can restore this balance in order for schools to operate in an optimal way. Thank you very much. Um, for your attention and uh, your invitation. I wish you all the best. It's a great event for um, the next days. Kalima, <laughs> over to you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, it's really your honor. I'm sorry, my voice is very difficult to come. Please, Rajaro, sir, please carry on. Spaining. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very Thank you, much for honoring us. Thank you. Daniel Lampu, ma'am, thank you for gracing the event, first of all, uh, because we are very happy for your presence, because it makes us uh, <laughs> happier. That is the first thing. Then we know uh, you are uh, a man of, uh, I don't know, uh, what we call a source of inspiration, a source of inspiration, a source of knowledge, a source of everything that is related to knowledge. And thank you for the wonderful inputs you put forward here, uh, especially for health education. A systematic health education. Really, all inputs are very uh, solidly uh, valid inputs. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, uh, you are you have been supporting us for the last two years, and uh, this year also you joined. Uh, we are honored and humbled. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, with this note, uh, we invite our one more special guest of the day, mm -hmm. special person, uh, Colonel Professor Dr. Dinesh Sabnishji, additional representative to NOC for. WFPTP, Secretary General SBI India, Commander in Chief uh, CSLI India. So having his presence in the special occasion really it makes uh, value to our program an added advantage. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for gracing the event. And uh, over to you. After uh, we'll talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. First of all, for inviting me for this wonderful peace summit. And uh, my best wishes and my, all my blessings to all the dignitaries and speakers who are present here today. Uh, let me begin with health is wealth, the way it is always said. You know, the health is the most important factor uh, for anybody's life. And if there is a good health, that's where the progress starts. That's where the peace starts. That's where the development starts. So, um, let me begin first with what is health and why in SDG3, uh, health is given the most important uh, uh, importance to it. First of all, what is health? Health is made up of four components. The way uh, Ms. Rania said, I would like to elaborate that part. So those four components, which 
with the balance of those four components we we could uh, have a good health and which are those four components first is physical fitness second is mental health or mental fitness third is we go with emotional fitness fourth is social fitness or social health and of course we do have spiritual health which also follows as a fifth component but the major components when we talk about are the four components and in this the major one the most important one which most of the people don't focus on that is mental health what is mental health mental health is able to sustain the stress or the tensions that are around you the negative energy that is around you if you are able to control it if if you are able to sustain it then of course the physical health the emotional health and the social health can be maintained all these four components are interconnected if you are mentally fit or if you are mentally strong you are going to be emotionally controlled and when you are emotionally controlled it is going to be that you will love to go for a physical uh, fitness or the physical uh, activities and of course with all this comes the social balance because if there is no emotional balance or if there is a uh, uh, impact on the mental health definitely the social health will also hamper it is not going to be good now the way we talk about the health there is also the second topic which we call it is as a well being well being is absolutely connected with the health if we are able to have the well being we are able to have the health but what is well being well i would say having the disciplined organized life whether we talk about having a good sleep whether we have uh, talk about having a proper nutrition whether we talk about having a physical fitness of course the balance of in physical fitness is aerobic and anaerobic workouts it's just not aerobic or just not anaerobic so it has to be a balance that need to be maintained so in well being sleep nutrition physical fitness and also the meditation or or the or the mental balancing matters a lot and that's how that, that's the reason we always keep saying that well being is correlated or absolutely goes with health if you are properly maintaining the well being if you are having a hygienic and sanitary aspects being also taken part during your well being the health will be balanced the health will be fit of course in sdg 3 united nations came up with this this plan to have a sustainability in health and well being in 2015 with the target of 2030 for all the members who are all the member states and the member countries who are part of the united nations this sustainability the way we say why they have put this sdg goal sustainable development goal if you are not able to have the sustainable plan if you are not able to come up with the sustainability in our planning processes for the betterment of the goal for good health and well being there will be imbalance the sustainability plays a very very vital role for example government of india has been taken a lot of uh, uh, they have put this lot of emphasis on uh, polio drive they, uh, recently we saw it during the covid 90% of the uh, population was sustainably given the vaccination if we talk about in the education we are seeing the happiness curriculum which plays a very vital role from the point of controlling the mental health for the children in in the school which also is aligned in the corporates where we also go ahead with the happiness curriculum if we are happy we are mentally fit if we are mentally fit we are emotionally fit if we are emotionally fit we are physically fit and socially fit so see how the connection is built up it's very very vital that we responsible people should look forward for the betterment of health and well being if the country is fit healthy and have a good well being and good organized well being the country is definitely going to go towards the development if there is going to be a proper health in that country if the society have a good healthy well being then there is going to be a peace 
and this peace is something which is very very vital in today's world because without peace we can't have the development whether we talk about the economical development whether we talk about uh, the 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 uh, the industrial development or any other development financial developments this development requires good health and well being and this is something which we all should be really looking forward and looking forward to come up with some good plans good sustainable micro plans that could enhance the quality of the health and well being for our society whichever country we live in recent world there has been so many conflicts there are so many conflicts which are going on all over the world i'm not going to talk about the countries where the conflicts are going to or taking place but yes there are so many conflicts which are on if we talk about in in the asian continent if we talk about in african continent somewhere this has to stop and this peace i think the first stage or one of the stage that is sdg 3 which talks about health and well being is very very vital i hope i am able to convey some message in this peace summit for all of you who are listening there and the one who are going to listen to this uh, the recording what we have uh, uh, for this today's summit so my my conclusion will be that let's have a good health which can give us peace and development thank you so much and god bless you all thank you dear brother thank you thank you so much actually our uh, rania lampur ji she build a foundation and then that uh, foundation you have built a chasm so fabulous brother the way you have connected uh, health and well being with the peace really that's uh, next level really thank you thank you so much uh, dear professor vinish uh, ji you have done a fabulous job uh, we are very much uh, happy because you are here i always say that the presence is very important first of all then the second thing is message because message is always good because whenever we invite the people we know they are all very well versed people resource persons we know that but the presence they give us in the platform that's very important thank you ji thank you for the wonderful presentation and the way you connected especially the mental health really nowadays the people are people are least bothered about that but if we see the people who say that uh, they are 100% uh, certified uh, 100% certified 100% healthy people but if we check their mind you know that is entirely correct they don't know they don't accept it so that's what the society but anyway you have thrown light on a beautiful things thank you thank you so much for connecting especially with the health to peace thank you brother then we have a special person always happy person always happy person dr sujatha singh ji are you there can you please switch on your camera so that we can see you Yes, uh, my camera is on. I'm here. Yes, yes, yes. A special person of the day, the keynote speaker of this program, Dr. Sujatha Singh ji, who is popular author, TEDx speaker, life coach, sound and spiritual scientist, and more, uh, uh, especially above all, a great humanitarian. Really, whenever she gives a message about uh, sound, because it's not just sound, sound to health, health to sound. a unique concept a unique concept a unique person we have today in the form of sriyata singh ji so the moment we asked her to be the keynote speaker of this event she said happily accept and uh, she is now here and i uh, will share a lot after the presentation over to dr sriyata singh ji thank you so much rajara sir and it's always a pleasure this is my second year and i remember how beautiful it was last year so we are going to talk about health and as we have heard from uh, uh, rana lampo ma'am as well as from dinesh sir they have so beautifully put up the various aspects of health in this various forms the various levels of health so today i will be putting it a little more insight into understanding how we can make it better and as you right rightly said it's all about sound so yes i will be covering a little bit about meditation also here so when we talk about health the most important aspect which according to me here comes that the ability to manage stress positively and look at life positively able to enjoy and judge life positively is where well being starts 
However, when we come to health, it's about the human sustainability, which is about maintaining and improving the human capital in the society. As we all know, without human beings, this world will not be able to even sustain itself. In fact, with regards to its economic development, with regards to its social development, and also with regards to its sustainable environmental sustainability. Often we look at a number of people taking health for granted. Yes, till our age, we feel that we are all fine and we can move on. But however, sustainable development goal three of the UN is based on the idea that human societies must live and meet their needs without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. And yes, at all ages, this is very important. Being in good health, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and social at all levels across all age groups is very important. And so this, yes, it was rightly said that we need to start it young at the school levels, wherein the children can be taught about this, wherein proper education, information, can be shared and made into a curriculum so that the children can learn this and inculcate them in a disciplined way in their lives. Now, when we are talking about this, it's not just the schools, but it's also the corporates. It's also the government departments. It is also for the whole nation to come together and take this on a war footing because without health, there is no life. And without life, we do not have an environment where we can sustain, grow and develop. The SDG3, which talks about health and well-being, here I would like to share that India, we have seen that we have been able to become the vaccine providers to the whole world. But somehow still we are lagging a little behind because of the disparity between the rural and urban infrastructure with regards to health, with regards to the information passing on to the rural part so that we can have proper health services for them and the awareness being created through the right education. Again, coming to this aspect, aspect of meeting the human needs, there are major problems faced, as we all have seen. The physical activity and nutrition not being in place. Obesity is the next big problem, which all nations across the world is facing, especially the urban societies. There is substance abuse, the increased rate of problems with regards to mental health is the biggest alarming situation today. And yes, mental health is something which we have to focus on so that, as we know, we had a pandemic recently, but the parallel pandemic which is coming up is issues with mental and emotional health. Most of the governments across the world are now concerned about this because if it is not handled now, I am sure that as per the statistics which has been studied, we will have to have a lot of funds pumped in to handle these issues. And mental health issues, as we all know, is far more difficult to handle than the physical issues. Again, 93% of the physical issues which are faced by human beings are related to the mental health not being handled well. Strangely, we are only focusing on the pharmaceutical research and development to see that physical conditions can be taken care of. However, I guess it's time to shift and look at those aspects which needs to be handled, and that is the mental and emotional wellness. Where there is wellness, physical conditions get better. And if the well-being is ignored, lots will be pumped into in the form of funds to cure the physical ailments. Every time there is a physical ailment which needs to be catered, there is not just a loss of resources, but there is also a lot of other factors associated which could have been used up called as the opportunity cost, that will be hampered. So it's very important that each and every country starts looking at mental and emotional wellness as the most important aspect of the pandemic, which is coming up and which needs to be handled. As per the research done by the WHO, one out of every five adults is undergoing mental health issues. That is an alarming situation. According to the Nimhan study in Bangalore, it was studied that one out of every seven Indian, if not handling their mental health properly currently, they would lead to medical conditions which may need psychiatric help. Now coming to such alarming situations, I guess it's time to step up 
the children in schools with the right education have life skill education quota have meditation becoming an integral part of their curriculum have creativity aspects enhanced so that they are able to express themselves have adult education on mental and emotional wellness having a proper consortium communities of volunteers and leaders coming together so that they can help people from the grassroots to see that their mental health issues are handled before they become a next pandemic again the elderly lead a lot of emotional health emotional scaffolding they need a lot of social belongingness that sense has been missing now so again training people the volunteers to take care of that bringing up societies and communities so that all of these issues can be handled again emotional wellness is only possible when we bring in the concept of the happiness index just like we have the gdp which ranking we are at what is it that we need to benchmark what are the aspects we need to leverage on what are those aspects which we need to see as threats and start our research and development have people getting qualified in the subjects and push it up to the sense that they are able to move ahead with awareness and curb on the various resources which will be used on this aspects rather than being used on other development aspects of life yes if human beings do not understand these aspects till it is still raw i guess it would be too late schools colleges universities corporates all of them are now having an integral subject integral part of concept of happiness and wellness corporate wellness programs when i'm conducting these programs across the world i notice that the productivity increases and the absenteeism reduces when this this particular sessions are conducted in schools and universities we have noticed that the students are better at grasping their education their learnings secondly they are able to handle the stress positively they are able to judge their lives positively and yes when the health gets better also the funds with regards to the insurance the insurance companies are very happy with corporates which has corporate wellness programs because their expenses in form of redemptions they reduce so overall when there is happiness there is peace and when there is peace there is a lot of scope for having a healthy population and a healthy population is going to be one which is going to be economically sustainable socially sustainable and will become a contribution to not just themselves or to the society or nations but to the whole world and yes peace is most important and inculcating the concept of being able to have a whole curriculum wherein they meditate on a regular basis i guess that is where peace dwells in so it's time we all step up and join movements like this world peace summit which we are having now to see that we are able to move ahead not just for ourselves but for our families for our society for the nation and the whole world now when the whole world has become a global village even if one country is in distress if one country is at war the other countries are being affected and they are going to feel the pain and if we can understand this concept i guess we will be more mature with regards to our physical mental emotional social spiritual health and radiate it to the whole world start with yourself see the transformation and radiate it to the world and yes on that note i think i've been able to share my as my thoughts on why it's important to have mental emotional wellness in a practical form in a education form to bring about world peace and economic sustainability thank you so much raja rao sir and the whole team for giving this opportunity thank you ma'am thank you so much uh... if our uh, uh, carlin ma'am is uh, well today then the feedback would be mind blowing <laughs> but ma'am is uh, some these are some not feeling well but anyway i try my best but you are the best <laughs> if there is a man of the match award in this program certainly we'll give it to you you uh, did the job as a keynote speaker we trusted we had it trusted you then uh, you proved it and uh, you went beyond our expectations because you have covered almost all uh, almost all aspects of him really the moment you said the spiritual health uh, really that's so great because people know the people don't know that uh, even that exists spiritual health 
uh, they have to because still i am thinking about my emotional health because still i think that i was stuck in 2006 some day i would wake up and say think that it everything is a dream the summits meeting governors chief ministers all these lorries i think sometimes it might happen because i don't know exactly but uh, i think uh, because uh, ever since my childhood uh, when i think something is good is going to happen then i wake up suddenly from my sleep and uh, oh it's a dream <laughs> that's what i used to think and uh, so i don't know exactly but the way you have put forward about uh, happiness in being uh, emotional health spiritual health really all these things are required as uh, as uh, if the moment comes we'll mention uh, in front of our prime minister we have a great person in our nation sriyata singhe ji our nation needs uh, <laughs> our services <laughs> in happiness because uh, that is what missing not only in india everywhere people think that they have money but they don't have happiness so that is required because the moment we see the people we can pursue so that's why i said before i introduce you you are a happy person uh, you are because you are blessed blessed to smile right and the one more person we have uh, because she is very special uh, specially nada ji are you there yes i am here uh, yes yes uh, one mm-hmm. second one second <laughs> she starts a program in indian time at 6 pm and the program ends at 11 pm but at 6 pm the same smile and at 11 pm the same, the same smile really actually running a five hour program is very much tiresome but for uh, international internship university and uh, from pradipta uh, mandal's uh, program she conducts numerous programs for various organizations depending on uh, their requirement but uh, she can she would help any organization if they ask her the moment the first moment they enter the smile and the moment she leaves the program the same smile uh, really so that that uh, happiness because that uh, smile not only makes her happy but everyone whoever joins that program because i feel always uh, blessed to pronounce my name from her because whenever she pronounces my name she, she says raja so i feel uh, it's a privilege and honor Uh, because she has that uh, magic in her smile so she makes everyone happy in her program so i felt very happy so that uh, she has chosen that health and well being the moment uh, i saw the topic she has to be here as a special guest and uh, she has to share her experiences because our experience are the best lesson because this program is meant for that because in future uh, you believe you may believe it or not but uh, this 2022 and 2023 world peace summit will stand it will stand because there are 100 international visionaries and the several governments who trusted us in our concept and they sent us their messages so and here uh, in number of visionaries they are joining they are spending their valuable time with us because they know the worth of this program and they are giving their valuable messages so now we have from uh, uh presia we have professor nada uh, here to share her views on this uh, beautiful topic sdg3 over to you uh, professor nada ji thank you thank you sir raja thank you for this opportunity uh, really honored to be here today thank you dr caroline uh, amazing uh, speakers guest speakers before me grace jata all amazing Uh, yesterday after zero hunger no poverty we come to the well being so saraja can i share my screen yes please okay give me a permission thank you okay. ஒரு 
uh, me in all my subjects uh, are involving all 17 SDGs in my curriculum and all what I'm doing uh, for my students. So today, wealth is health, the SDG three. So if we have a poor health, we are really poor. So how to make that, how to achieve that? So we need to have always a positive mindset, positive emotions. Every morning, we need to take a deep breath, not only one deep breath, three deep breaths and say, and say God, thank you, we are alive. We, will, we need to have today a very special day. So our mental health, this is the best way. We need all, all, always to create the calm. So you see this beautiful island, this beautiful heart. This is an island on my Croatia, uh, Croatia Adriatic Sea. We have so many islands. So I'm lucky because the coast is nearby me. And uh, when I don't feel good, I always go to the sea or to the forest. We have a beautiful nature. So, Sir Raja, Dr. Kar Dr. Color Caroline, I hope that you will visit my country once and you will see then you will really feel very good, very good. Uh, some uh, some uh, glimpses, some little inserts from the beaches, from the beautiful places from my country, uh, how we do. So, uh, before already professor talks about the wheel of the well-being so taking care about the emotional spiritual financial physical rational professional well-being all is for us important how can we do that we need to keep learning we need to connect with other people we need to share our knowledge what it means to have a knowledge if we don't share so being very active being very active on the education on the humanity but everything we need to involve, learn new skills, to share new skills, and that will make us really happy. And that has a big influence on our mental wealth and our mental wealth. We need to have these healthy habits. We are, is that healthy? No. So talking about digital literacy, financial literacy, media literacy, we need to talk about echo ecological education and the literacy so it is coming here we see here that malnutrition is a big problem every every one dollar invested in the school meals has a ten dollars routine yesterday we were talking about the zero hunger how to stop that hunger in the school we see the students coming in school with the empty stomach isn't it for our heart I cannot see that so many <clears throat> times I make, I can say we make uh, celebrations. Not why I want to make a celebration. I want to give that students a food. That is something what, what we are doing today. We have a big promotion. We have a big open day. And what we do, all students have a great, uh, great lunch. And that is why we are organizing that kind of ceremony. We don't need to prove nobody. We don't need to prove nobody how good we are. We need to do good actions, good things we need to do. How will we prove that we are a good person? So all these 70 SDGs, talking about the nutrition, education, helping the families, giving the right foods, giving the healthy food, giving the eco food. We have so many great, we have a beautiful environment, forests, lakes, fields. So we have all to make a eco food. We need a production. We need a production to give that. So starting from us, starting from <clears throat> us, our family, our community, going on the national level, and on the global level. As our Sir Raja said, what it means to have a lot of money, that people are not happy. I'm sure that that people are not happy. We are happy with that, what we have. And if we can give that money to other poor person. So that is our mission. We have the universal, we have these principles. We need to educate our students about this principle. We need to have this kind of subjects, this kind of subjects in our curriculum. They need to know because today we know that we have so many fat students who have, uh, who have 
more, the bigger weight, then they need to have. So they need to eat less than half. What are the principles? What are the universal principles? How to eat and how much to sleep? So taking proteins, taking, taking fats, that is very important to know how to make a meal. And this pyramid, we know that when we take many energy or calories we burn we know that we gain the weight so when we will lose the weight when we take in less energy that we can burn so energy balance is very important we need to make it we meet, need to do that and we need to know all these phases case studies of reports studies so so many researchers today are showing us what we do, we need to do with this school meals, how to give the students, how to give what the student meal needs to have. Student meals for all, that needs to be everywhere around us. So these studies are showing how much energy, how much nutrition, how much micronutrition we need to take. Is it a lower is, or it is not? How many calories by day we need? So every day, I will repeat, millions of children around the world are going to school with the empty stomach. So the people who have money need to share the money, need to feed these poor children. That is happiness. That is only happiness. So you see what it means happy life, healthy body with a healthy mind. How can you have a healthy mind and a healthy body? You need to think that so here, it visual community here we are doing this actions our grace saraja and madame caroline and all here today yesterday tomorrow and all these people educators uh, entrepreneurs all are doing great work so that is that is what we need to do and if we want to make a decent grow economic grow social grow we need to know that nutrition is in the heart of the sdgs Every one dollar invested will give you sixteen dollars return. You have sixteen dollars return, and you can share that money. Think about this. Think about that. Think about the meal. Think what will your students think first. Can you think about that? Your children are happy. Other children are not happy. So let's contribute to this SDG. Somebody will say, why are you talking about the SDGs? What? Why SDGs? Why SDGs conference? People don't understand. People don't understand the importance of this because everything today, what we are doing in any field, everything, every action is a contribution with the SDGs. So will we achieve that? I think that this is seven years till 2030. We need to together continue. We need to be a big change we need to be a change bigger be a big change and make actions together we can do that there is no one fit we and if we learn the students the model they will understand thank you thank you for your attention thank you excellency thank you so much thank you <laughs> thank you thank you so much thank it's so you. amazing the way you have focused on nutrition <laughs> and uh, investing one dollar and returning sixteen dollars, the concept is so beautiful. Really, uh, that has to be discussed once again because it would benefit nations. So, really amazing the journey through Thank nutrition you. because uh, the three speeches are different and this one is different uh, because you have taken to next level by going into deep inside the subject of nutrition and the way you have presented really marvelous. We know that uh, you can present in that way, but the subject uh, uh, is different and the concept is different and taking it to uh, uh, health and well-being next to peace. That's so amazing, Excellency. The journey and the connecting points are dotted uh, fantastic and fabulously. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nadaji. Thank you. And, uh, thank I you so much. Uh, Thank you, thank you so thank much. You then much. Uh, we have beautiful thank people who are going inviting us. Thank you, madam, for inviting us. Thank you very much. Thank Not you. Madam. And Madam Caroline, be prepared for 5 June. We are having a celebration. 
Sure, ma'am. Definitely will be and there. Take care you. about your voice, please. Yes, ma'am. Tomorrow I will be all right. I'm under medication. Thank you. Thank you. I think Ambassador Smiley Mukta from USA. She's there, I think. Smiley Mukta ji, are you there? Ambassador Smiley Mukta ji, we are going to second session. Okay, she's there. Let me introduce Her Excellency, Ambassador Smiley Mukta ji, who is uh, well known as global icon, a green queen, sustainable development ambassador, and peace queen. She has uh, been here from USA. We are honored to have her presence. Over to Ambassador Dr. Smiley Muktaji. Thank you. Thank you very much, you know, Dr. Raja Rao and Professor Carolyn. You know, I should give a big, you know, round of applause to both of them for conducting this beautiful, beautiful session. It has not been easy to conduct such interactive and informative session and always inviting me because I always, maybe I'm not that very much active, but you know, for this platform, I always feel privileged and highly humbled and beyond gratitude to be a part, to be heard in my own humble opinion. Well, um, as, <laughs> as I always say that I bring things on the table, as a straight shooter and a fact finder. For me, well-being and healthy, it is, to my opinion, I would only reach out to each and every one. Healthy doesn't mean eating healthy and living a healthy lifestyle. For me, I would appreciate to bring this with my opinion that how healthy are we as a human being? Are we looking into that aspect? No matter how far we go in this fast moving materialistic world, we all are running with a higher speed of being not generous, not happy, under stress, not uplifting, not supporting, not cooperating and having hatred compare, compete, what are we doing? Where are we going? We are all in this planet to add value, just being valuing yourself. If you really ask me, these matters a lot. For me, I, when I have different kinds of clients, they always come back and say that, ma'am, we are eating healthy. We are eating plant-based, we are doing yoga, we are doing meditation, we are following spiritualism, but still I'm not healthy. Still I'm seeing doctor. What is the reason behind it? Remember God has given us everything, full power with the full force of positive sense. Just like a simple example, God has given us a remarkable tool, or rather I can say, to beautify yourself with a simple spa smile. Why can't we carry that? God has given us beautiful brain to act wise. Why are we not doing that? Because in this fast moving materialistic world, we are moving, we are copying, we are full of competing and comparing with each other. And in result, we are under a lot of stress, anxiety, tension, depression, and our melting illness is just speeding up. Why can't we control that? For that, we need to control ourselves. There are many things in the world which we cannot control. It is not under our control, to be really honest. But what if I tell you there is one thing which is under our control, and that is your state of mind. Everything moves in and around that. 
right now at the moment when i am being honoredly heard among all of you it's our state of mind what we are getting from each other are we respecting each other it's again our state of mind honestly i am i may be wrong some may take it in a positive manner some may not these are all signs of healthy attitude healthy human being because we have to live loud happy healthy that doesn't mean we only have to take healthy food and yoga meditation of course those are important but overall important is that how we respect how we bring ourselves to celebrate others how we bring smile to others uplift support appreciate i feel highly humbled and honored when i see myself being heard remaining simple attain simplicity in life that will attain and give longevity and at the same time live loud happy healthy and you see the fulfillment among ourselves when we talk about well being there are different types of well being well being is it's it's a it's a complete package of living healthy happy and that's that's a complete combination there are physical well being emotional intelligence at the same time societal well being but for me above all is personal well being that means how you take care of yourself how you respect yourself how you stand as a role model how you bring that positive change in the society serving others that is called fulfillment and that gives a lot of pleasure no matter that i mean above all which i can say is that we have to respect each and every individual every creatures on earth respect them as a nature lover of course i highly pledge everyone respect nature respect every human being let's try to respect each other in and around us when i ask someone please start respecting the person who is sitting next to you the answer will be oh, i don't know her i don't know him see where i'm coming from it's a simple example how we can do it's only our state of mind nothing else and when you are happy inside doing things what you like be a role model change maker love to do things serving others you see the fulfillment among yourself when you are happy you are bringing that well being people in and around will give bundles of showers on you health is the most important thing and health is wealth but nowadays it's other way around wealth is health but if we move in that direction we are losing the peace we are all looking around we are stressed we have no peace remember peace is within ourselves control yourself live in legacy love people bring things which makes you happy and bring smile to others and above all try to respect all the seniors because they need us at the same time we have to stand as a role model for a young masterminds because they are our future leaders just being 
happy. Spread positivity. Live in nature, love nature, go for nature work. People do not understand the power to be in nature. Believe me, I'm a role model. I live happy being in nature. Because nature gives us all those positive synergy, absorbing the negativity. And that's the secret of longevity. Nature work, whenever I'm stressed, of course, I try to control, not because I have another person who is my love of my life and he brings that bundle of happiness to me. Now, people will be asking, who's that? I have my lovely golden retriever. Who is my love of my life? He always, you know, pulls me and he is the best buddy to give me energize nature. And I am very fortunate to be a pet parent. So I humbly, because you cannot experience, you understand unless you experience. So that is what loving nature, loving pet, loving human being, giving, serving others, Remaining humble and beyond grateful is all is needed when you stand to live happy loud. Personal well-being is so, so, so important. So it's a high time to step up and be happy, bring happiness in and around you, no matter in whichever go, way, go beyond. Don't be selfish in giving to others because nowadays we all look for return gift, to be honest, because as I say that I'm a straight shooter and a fact fight. We all are running after success. Success doesn't mean tons of owners. Success means how you bring things on the table, which leaves an imprint and an imprint. Another very vital point, which I need to mention here above all is that let's respect our feminism. Let's express, not impress. Because I need to point it out because of that reason, where our young masterminds are going, it's leading nowhere because they are copying, competing, and in tons and dealing with problems, stress, depression, anxiety. Because of the reason of this digital world and materialistic we are all moving at a human pace so we as a leader we have to stand against it because when we are happy we bring others happy we bring that positive vibe synergy to each one of us i know i have to pause now i'm a person i can keep going on and on and on but respecting the time, the value, and all the eminent personalities here. I need to leave a flow with my wrapping message. Let's step up. We are all in this world as equal as every human being. Let's love, live loud, happy, give others, and see the bundle of happiness shower on you. Is my promise, if we do that, Peace is around us and we live and loud, happy in peace. Thank you once again, Dr. Raja Rao and Professor Caroline for bringing me on this platform as always, remaining humble, signing off from Dallas. Thank you so very much for listening patiently with me. But remember, Smiley is just a call away. Anyone who needs me on the table, I will be right for you then and there. Maybe a little delay, but I will be with you because I live loud with the identity and leaving an imprint. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. You are so amazing. It's uh, as usual because we need not say anything because your body language is speaking everything about you. You are so energetic and uh, uh, you are energy vibrating. <laughs> so all our, actually it has taken 20 minutes time. In second session, only five minutes because there are 10 I'm speakers. so sorry. No I'm problem, so no sorry. Because we are enjoying. <laughs> because <laughs> you have given the knowledge of uh, health, not from outside, but from inside. So it's very close to our heart. We feel honored and humbled to have your presence. We know that uh, because last year only we discussed uh, how you deal with all these herbals and all. You are doing a fantastic job because you are, you are giving Indianness to international community. That's so great. <laughs> Fantastic job from giving uh, health from herbals. That's not a simple task, but you are doing a commendable job. And uh, you are uh, is live example. You are a live example because your energy speaks everything. Volumes about uh, your persona. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you so much. Uh, we have uh, beautiful people, other beautiful people. Let's invite, uh, but uh, please know that uh, it is a second session. This session carries only five minutes for speaker. Please do support because uh, by 10, at any cost, we have to do this program so that uh, let's make it five minutes so that uh, we'll do uh, on time. Okay. Anuradha Jainji, being architect, founder, and director, we welcome Anuradha Jainji to address the gathering. Anuradha Jainji, are you there? Then uh, we'll go to Queen Victoria Godwinji, CEO of Dynamic Empire Global. Excellency, are you there? Queen Victoria Ji. Yes, Hello? Ah, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. It's your time, Sivo. Hello, good, good evening, everyone. First again, Nigeria, this is evening. Hi. I'm very glad to be here once again and I'm grateful. So today we are talking about health. You know, health is very paramount in everyone's life. And he's one of the things that is very, very important. You know, good health is everything. Health is the state of the well-being of everyone. We have both emotional, mental, and social health. And I believe I've I've actually been in the medical, uh, the medical phase for some time. Let me say from 2012, and I've seen a lot. You know. If you don't, if if you are not healthy inwardly, you are not even healthy outwardly. How do I mean by that? Uh, what I mean is by taking care of your body, your mind, your mindset, your eat your the food you eat, your the exercise you also do helps you to keep fit. If you are not healthy, even in your place of work, anywhere you are going. You can't work well. So for you to be healthy, you need to take care of yourself, take a lot of vitamins, and actually take a lot of bi balanced diet fruit to keep yourself in a good shape. Health is very important because in life, a sick man can't do anything. Neither can a sick woman do anything. So for you to be healthy, you need to also be positive in everything you are doing. If you are not positive in your thoughts, negative thought also bring bring someone down. It also make you feel depressed when when you are you have a lot of positive negative a lot of negative thought around you. So once your mind is you have positive thought always around you, you can be very better in everything you do. You can be better in your place of work. You can be better in your everyday thinking, your everyday do to do list. But when you have negative thought, negative vocations around you, it brings you down. Even in your health, you, you health wise, you can't function well. So I I believe that good health has to do with your mental state of mind. Because mental health is very important. It's very, very, very important. Everybody needs a good mental health and a good mindset. Taking good, good food, eating good food, fruit, balanced diet, vegetables really helps. You know, 
like in where we work and you have a deficiency in the food you eat, it really brings you down. It, it stops you from going, go, moving forward. It also stops you from, from doing the little things that you can do. So health is wealth. No matter the money you have in this world, when you don't have good health, when you are not functioning health-wise, it's just nothing. So I believe that we need to keep ourselves fit. We need to exercise. We need to take a lot of vitamins. We need to take a lot of a, a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables to keep ourselves healthy. And apart from that, so we also need a good mindset because without a good mindset, without a positive mindset, I believe that everything we are working for is nothing. If you don't have a good mindset, you don't take care of your 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 body, your your the food you eat, and you don't exercise, you don't you don't think positively everything you work for is going to be on the drain because your health will be affected and having deficiency in your health is very very bad like some some weeks some weeks ago i i was trying to plan a program and i didn't i didn't really i want to take care of my health i was just going about with my busy schedule and the next thing i discovered myself was feeling so down so the doctor was like why don't you rest Walking without resting, walking without taking rest also deteriorates your health. So what you need to do is rest, take good rest. Rest is very important for your health. No matter what you do, no matter your busy schedule, no matter your work, have a little time to rest. It's really, really helpful. So health is wealth. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. And I know with this little few points of mine, you will raise and you will also think possibly health is well. Thank you. Thank you, Princess Victoria Godwinji. You are the CEO of Dynamic Empire, a ruler, princess, queen, so many. But whatever you said, 100% applies to you. You need to take some rest because your face is saying that uh, facial experience like that uh, you are working very hard. Uh, take some rest, please. But uh, you have given a beautiful advice about the food. Really, food is the panacea for all problems. Really, if we take good food, really, that is a great, good suggestion. Uh, we think of that hospital, this hospital, and that nutrition. Okay, th those are all good, but the basic thing is good food. And uh, the way you have focused on the food and the second thing, rest, really, two are very important. As Thank you. Thank you so much for that uh, beautiful presentation. In spite of your busy schedules, in, in spite of your highness, but you have patiently given you a beautiful presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want uh, Carolyn, ma'am, to uh, interview here <laughs> to appreciate uh, Victoria Ji. Carolyn, ma'am, over to you. Okay. <laughs> enough, enough. <laughs> then I invite Dr. GM Archana Pridarshini, ma'am, who's the principal of TSMS. Uh, Mankundur Karimnagar. Oh, really so great to have our Telugu speaker here. <laughs> Ma'am, over to you. Thank you very much, sir. I'm very much delighted and uh, I don't know for inviting me to this platform, especially Wish for Humanity United International Royal Council Chairman, President, Excellences, and all the global leaders. And Dr. G. M. Darshini working as a principal in Karimnagar District, Telangana State. Thank you very much. Uh, so, can I share my uh, PPT? I'm prepared with my PPT. Please. Thank you. It's on my desktop, sir. Please share it again, ma'am. Close it and share it again. Shall I close it up? One second.
Am I audible? Perfectly, ma'am. Thank you very much, sir. I'm very much delighted and privileged to present my presentation on this World Peace Summit 2023. This is my first uh, presentation. Uh, thank you, Raja Rao, sir, and uh, Carolyn, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, let me start. We all know that uh, our uh, session is on sustainable development goal three, that is on good health and well being. Let me start with the question, why the sustainable development goals for 2023 are more important than ever? Why it is uh, it has been taken as a very serious issue and suddenly it has emerged in all the countries that no, we have to speak on this issue. 2020 was supposed to be an important milestone. Like in all the countries, there was, there was a very big uh, uh, like a debate about 2020. International cooperation with the major global conferences on biodiversity, climate change, gender equality, and more set to take place. Yet, a year full of expectations. We had very much full of expectations 2020, like everywhere, every day, some or the other uh, on uh, you know major issues we were speaking, uh, we spoke on this. Yet a year full of expectations and updates was ultimately canceled due to the global pandemics. We all experienced recently like um, 20 uh, recently on this um, pandemic now how this can be helpful can helpful as recover more quickly from covid 19 we all experienced it was a very bad experience to everyone who has a lost of course we, even i lost my mother do, uh, during that pandemic also but it's it isn't a one off occurrence it's one connection in a larger chain of climate inactivity habitat destruction disrupting public health systems, widening revenue, and the gender gap that we are all playing for. All these are playing very major roles um, you know, in distracting uh, the environment. Next question is, what are the sustainable development goals for 2030 then? We spoke about 2020, of course, but 2030, what are the goals? The sustainable development goal are also known as global goals are universal goals designed to end especially poverty, protect the planet and ensure that everyone can enjoy peace, prosperity by 2030, which are the major issues in all the countries. In each United Nations member state, they are concentrated around six themes, especially dignity, what uh, you know, recently Madam said, P dignity, people, the environment, partnerships, justice, and prosperity. All these are required. The major themes have centered. These goals go beyond economic development to encourage social development. The SDGs aim to promote and tackle other major global issues, including climate change, which we are facing right now, economic inequality, innovation, sustainable consumption, peace, equity, culminating of 17 goals we are supposed to discuss. 169 specific aims and 232 targets are in front of us. Now let us talk about today's topic, SDG goal number three. Ensure healthy life and promote well-being for all the ages right from the birth to death. Targets, reduce MMR, IMR, U5MR, end communicable diseases, prevent substance abuse, universal access, reduce one third of premature mortality from non-communicable diseases and half the deaths from road accidents. Well, uh, let us see what is this MMR, IMR and U5MR. Ensure healthy life and promote well-being for all at all ages. MMR is maternal mortality ratio infant mortality ratio, IMR, and U5MR is under five years of age mortality rate. 
is closely related to some negative socioeconomic factors like malnutrition, low immunization rates, and education, just now what other speakers have spoken about it. Now, what are the aims to reach the goals? To ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages, health and well-being are very, very important at every stage of one's life, starting from the beginning, from the birth of a child. This goal addresses all major priorities like reproductive, maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health, communicable and non-communicable diseases, universal health coverage and access for all to safe, effective, quality and affordable medicines and vaccines. I'm really thankful uh, to our Telangana government when uh, this pandemic was affected, we got good uh, vaccines where many lives were saved. And to prevent needless suffering from preventable diseases and premature deaths by focusing on key target that boosts the health of a country's overall population. Regions with the highest burden of diseases and neglected population groups and regions our priority areas. We have to focus on these areas where really neglected population groups are there. Goal three also calls for deeper investments in research and development, health financing, and health risk reduction and management. Well, let us see the targets. Target number one, in front of us by 2030, reduce the global maternal mortality ratio to less than 70 for one black life births. Can we? Yes. If the questions say, uh, can we? Definitely, if you all put together, put our hands together and save the environment. I'm sorry. Racial maternal mortality refers to deaths due to complication. Why these deaths are occurring? It's just because of complications from pregnancy or childhood. If we take care of the these people, I think we can reduce. Accurate measurement of maternal mortality remains challenging and many deaths still go uncounted. There are a number of hospitals where it was unregistered. And many countries still lack well-functioning civil registration and vital statistic systems. And where such systems do exist, reporting errors. There are many errors even if you find out whether incompleteness, unregistered deaths during pandemic there were many lakhs of people were unregistered also known as missing or misclassification of cause of death continue to pose a major challenge to data accuracy if we have the correct data i think we can definitely make sure that the, uh, the death rate can be reduced and how we can control this if we have skilled attendant every government uh, institution if they are trained well and if they are skilled attendant definitely we can reduce the mortality rate having a skilled healthcare provider at the time of child childbirth is very very important many of the women lose their life at the childbirth so life-saving intervention for both women and newborns. Not having access to this key assistance is uh, detrimental to women's and newborns health because this could cause the death of the woman or the newborns or long-lasting morbidity. Achieving universal coverage for this indicator is therefore essential, very, very essential for reducing maternal and newborn mortality and morbidity. The next target is by 2030 in front of us, is to end the preventable deaths of newborns and children under five years of age, just on what we said that uh, U5MR, with all countries aiming to reduce neonatal mortality uh, to at least as low as 12 per thousand live births and under five mortality to at least as low as 25 per thousand live births. And next, Target three by 2030 is to end the epidemics of AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, and neglected tropical diseases and combat hepatitis, waterborne diseases where many rural areas are still uh, facing such diseases and other communicable diseases. 
Target four by 2030, ensure universal access to sexual and reproductive health, healthcare centers, services, including for family planning, information and education, and integration of reproductive health into national strategies and programs. Target five, achieve universal health coverage, including financial risk protection, access to equality, essential health care services, and access to safe, effective quality, and affordable essential medicines and va vaccinations for all. Even uh, the students were uh, you know, about uh, 10 years of age, 12 years of age. Many of the countries during the pandemic, vaccines were given to save their lives. Target six, substantially reduce the number of deaths and illness from hazardous chemicals and air, water and soil pollution and contamination. If we keep the surroundings clean and if we motivate and uh, you know, if we teach them how to keep the clean cleanliness regarding the hygiene, definitely every rural area if they participate in this, definitely the whole country will be will become greenery. Good health and well-being for all is the foundation of the substantial development agenda. Despite recent progress, major challenges remain with regards to health. At least half of the world population still lack access to basic and affordable health services and impoverishment due to the out-of-pocket cost of health care is on the risk. Even today, I can say that as I'm uh, working as an academician in a rural place, Many of the uh, areas, you know, villages, are still impoverished, and they require uh, an emergency help and need at the uh, of the hour. So UNICEF has four keys that encourages all governments to ensure healthy life and promote well-being of all the children. First one is strengthen primary health care systems to reach every child, focus on maternal, newborn, and child survival, then prioritize child and adolescent health and well-being, including mental health. Support responses to reduce the impact on children and families of natural disasters, complex emergencies, and the demographic shifts. Now, I wanted to share a few uh, pictures of my school where uh, I'm really thankful to the government where uh, you know they're supporting very much uh, with the government doctors and sending uh, doctors to our schools. Uh, every specialist like uh, may, it may be a dental uh, and uh, you know counseling to the especially girl child where they uh, you know adolescent age what the problems are facing and clarifying many of the doubts where children um, you know, truly they don't come out with their uh, uh, doubts. So if such sessions are conducted in every school, definitely, I think we can uh, have a very good health and we can reach to every student. So let me ask a question. Is this a race we can win? If the question says, I said, yes. We have witnessed some great accomplishment over the last decade. Global school attendance has increased by 89% while child mortality has extreme and extreme poverty rates have really dropped up. Uh, this we can easily say that, but it's not enough. We need to reach 100% by 2030. Many other targets are showing like a, a slow but steady development, but no uh, victory has been secured. Like as I said, it's uh, 89 means uh, some more left over that it's our responsibility, we should shoulder responsibility to reach 100% target by 2030. The world is not scheduled to meet the SDGs by 2030 as the SDGs report 2020 demonstrate. We still have a way to go to the finish line by 2030. And the COVID-19 crisis has already threatened us to slow down. No matter how much we have, uh, not, we are trying to increase, but this pandemic has, uh, taught us very much and it threatened us very much to slow down and how we need to recope up and you know uh, regain whatever we have lost in the pandemic during the pandemic and uh, achieving the SDGs is a matter of protecting nature so what are the things where we can really focus on it and how to protect COVID-19 pandemic has been really a wake-up call for 
every citizen on this earth. The health of a planet and its ecosystem is directly related to our own health and the health of the economy. Protecting and restoring forests, mangroves, marine and coastal habitats help us achieve many goals. From tackling climate change to assisting millions of people in escaping poverty. As we rebuild from this goal pandemic, global pandemic, it is critical now that we reassess our relationship with the nature, like plantation uh, and uh, you know, increasing the greenery and thinking about the um, non-usage of plastics and all this matters a lot. At the national, corporate and individual levels, achieving SDGs is a matter of making wise decision. I really thank this platform by taking a very global uh, you know, wise decision uh, to discuss on these major issues. Companies must take advantage of the opportunity to prioritize a greenery, greener economy, abolish fossil fuel, subsidize and assist in the creation of green employment. This is most important uh, of the art that gives out quality jobs while protecting society. On an individual level, the responsibility lies with each of us to adopt more and more sustainable lifestyle and lower our overall carbon footprint. Again, I would like to share some of the greeneries of our uh, school. This is our kitchen garden and uh, some of the fruits we have grown. And uh, this is my uh, school with full of greenery where I received an award also uh, for the you know, uh, greenish what we have. Uh, really, we spent a lot of time on this. Even every child was given an opportunity to plant. And, uh, you know, plantation we have done. And the responsibility of every child when we have uh, taught them that how they should protect and uh, what are the uses we are going to get. And every student shown very much interest. And, um, you know, they have come forward and protected. And, uh, you know, they have shared their uh, uh, responsibility. Achieving SDGs is a matter of one more thing is listening to science. We live in an age of distrust of evidence, facts, and sciences. It also takes one click to spread misinformation. Just a fraction of a second uh, is enough to spread misinformation and conspiracy theories. It is the work of the scientists, academics, and experts who will guide us out of this pandemic and propel us towards the future where all SDGs are realized. Achieving SDGs require the main thing is cooperation. I'm really thankful to this platform where all the countries are very much cooperative in development. SDGs serve as a reminder that without shared responsibility and cooperation, nothing is possible. We risk leaving a large number of people behind if we don't share the blame. We must stand with those who have suffered the most in the pandemic where Carolyn Mann was sharing that how, uh, you know, uh, Madam was uh, very much supportive to uh, underprivileged and unprivileged people in providing uh, education, food, pro provisions, etc. I'm really thankful to Madam for serving very selfless uh, services. We must stand with those who have suffered the most, especially women, children, low-income communities, people with disabilities, refugees, asylum seekers, and displaced people. We must be informed and hold those in part accountable for all of this to happen. The best thing we can do for future generation is to keep the wheel turning, keep that uh, conversation going on and motivate each other to do better for the planet. I'm really thankful to the government, Telangana government and the central government, Sri uh, uh, no, Prime Minister Modi ji, uh, no, for uh, uh, bringing up a number of policies to help this, uh, especially children like uh, providing MDM, which is very nutritious food we are providing. Uh, we are providing uh, egg, uh, no, thrice in a week and uh, all the nutritious uh, you know, like measuring, we are given a menu where we have to follow that and uh, Akshay Patra. And not only this, um, health checkups, every government, uh, uh, you know, doctor has to 
visit the school and uh, uh, they have to check uh, immunization and vaccination, everything. So I'm really thankful to the government where uh, I'm uh, proudly say that, I can proudly say that if we compare with the recent years, uh, the communicable uh, uh, these uh, diseases have come down drastically and uh, most of the students are leading their healthy lives. I'm really thankful for giving me this opportunity and I thank all the members for patiently listening to me. And uh, Namaste. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Really uh, patiently listening because uh, already four or five speakers have left during this uh, terror, but uh, you uh, this time deserve that. Wonderful presentation. Thank I'm not sir. going to speak much, but beautiful, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Within Thank a short you. And uh, really, I'm sorry for taking so much of time for this. Now, I invite uh, Dr. Uh, Neeta Mishra, ma'am, founder, reach out. Thank you. Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Uh, uh, and how to close this? Th thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So I, I assure that I'll be taking only five minutes. Yes, and yes, please. this five minutes is very, very important because I am not talking what everyone has actually been talking about. Uh, so let me give you my introduction. I am basically a psychotherapist, a behavioral trainer, and I have a flight to catch because I have to move to train the principals tomorrow early morning. And I'm already pretty late here. So let me tell you that uh, I work with the rape survivors. I work with the destitute children. I work in the jail with the inmates. I also work with the transgenders for inclusion and diversity, getting them job in the corporate. So whatever, whatever we were speaking all, all the educationalists, all the visionaries, all the global ambassadors, let me tell you that I am borrowing the statement from Dr. Archana Ma'am, where she had written, is this race? we can win. Yes, certainly we can win this race if we start practicing only three things. That is A, B, and C. A is acceptance. This, all the SDGs, all the 17 SDGs, it's not necessary that we start from our school or from our surroundings. It's important to start from me, myself. How am I accepting this SDGs? Am I walking the talk? That is very, very important. We all talk about these people should be doing, the government should be doing, the community should be doing, but it's about how am I doing this and how am I practicing this? So first is acceptance is the key. We need to accept and we need to follow what the heart tells. Many a times there is always a juggle which goes on between the heart and the mind. And there is where we need to understand it's important to listen to your heart. Coming to the B, your behaviors. When we talk about acceptance, acceptance is about everyone. Acceptance is about class, creed, community, everyone. No sex, no religion. Accept people the way they are. We try to fix people. It's not necessary to fix people. We are not here to put the puzzle in the right place. Accept people the way they are. In our own house, we see that our parents, our siblings, our caretakers, our maids, no one is on the same page. We are all unique. We are all special. And we all special can bring in amazing inputs. So that is where our behavioral respect uh, aspect is seen. The behavior should have our core values. Our core values have to be cleared. And if we are practicing whatever we preach, definitely we will be seeing that the younger generation will 100% follow that. We will not have to give in a special kind of treatment to any way where we are so scared that there would be a mental health pandemic. Why are we even thinking about it? If I am positive, if my mindset is positive, if my surrounding is positive, 100%, whatever I am pouring in the cup, I will get that. If I'm pouring in coffee, I will get coffee. I cannot expect a mango juice. Absolutely no. If I am putting the seeds of watermelon and expecting a tomato to come out, it's not going to be possible. 
So the best thing is to give from your heart selflessly. This level is deteriorating. Our patience level is coming very, very zero. And that is where we see there are problems with physical health, mental health, social health, emotional health, financial health. Because all the finances are going to the doctors, healers, therapists. There is nothing which is getting maintained. So I think if we just have this ABC and this entire race, we all can win when we have such amazing souls. Like Raja Rao sir is there. Caroline ma'am. I have been interacting with Caroline ma'am with a couple of uh, platforms we, we have shared together. And she's a beautiful soul. And we have all the beautiful people. I think that is what Raja Rao sir has manifested to make this entire globe, entire universe peaceful, happy, healthy, and a cheerful place for everyone to stay. With this, I wrap up my five minutes. Thank you, sir, very, very much. Thank you, everyone. So let's remember our ABC. And this ABC allows us to be on this platform too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. That's so Thank amazing. You. I am humbled and I am honored. I am blessed. <laughs> the you. words you mentioned at the end about me, really. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. The you. words to describe yourself. Not for the speech, but for your services first. Yes. The areas yes. that you have chosen, that is really remarkable and amazing, ma'am. Uh, the first impression you have created with your services, really, that's so amazing. Then, Coming to your speech, that's, of course, uh, we can expect that. It's a fantastic. Thank you, ma'am. Because you are Gratitude. close to reality. You Gratitude. are close to reality. You are close to people. You are close to society. That's why you are making all the difference. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, thank we you. invite our honorable guest. Uh, ma'am, Iziyama, ma'am. She is already out there. Dr. Iziyama Estel, Nimmadi, CEO, Mummy and iMedia. She is the management education consultant. International keynote speaker, speaker. Over to you, Excellency. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here, Dr. Raja. Thank you so much, Dr. Victor, um, Caroline, rather. <laughs> I really appreciate you, ma'am. I am happy to be here. And once again, we are discussing SDG 3, good health and well-being. And we all can attest that SDG3 addresses different aspects of health. It talks about the reproductive health, the maternal health, the neonatal or newborn health, child and adolescent health. And it also talks about access to quality and affordable drugs and vaccine. So today I will quickly talk about the maternal health, that's the maternal and neonatal health. That will be my focus for today's event. Let me quickly share my screen. All right, so we are looking at good health and well-being. As the jury three ensures healthy lives and promotes well-being at all ages. Let me quickly. Like I said earlier in my introduction, as the G3 addresses different topics, different aspects, reducing child and maternal mortalities, disease prevention, improved sanitation and hygiene, mental health, increased access for medical services, efficient funding for health system, helping with COVID-19. So I'll be focusing on the maternal health. World Health Organization made it known a woman dies of pregnancy-related causes every two minutes. Most of these deaths are preventable with the right care at the right time. Current evidences suggest 
that the high rate of maternal and neonatal mortality in most third world countries is linked to three forms of maternal delay proposed by Tadros and Marin. The first is delay in making decisions to seek maternal health, maternal health care. The second is delay in locating and arriving at a medical facility. The third is delay in receiving skilled pregnancy care when the woman gets to the health facility. These are the three, the three things that are linked to neonatal and maternal mortality rates in most third world country. And why am I interested in this? This is one of the things we do in Mommy and I. We create information, we create awareness for women to know they need proper medical care. They need proper antenatal care during pregnancy because the high rate of maternal mortality is alarming. And it has, we need to create awareness so that people will take their health more seriously, especially pregnant women. Because when you are pregnant, you are not just taking care of yourself. You are also taking care of your child. Your child depends on you. Your child is trusting you as the mother to take the right medical decisions so that the child can finally make it to planet Earth. So the child cannot think for itself. The child is depending on you to take the right decision. So if you as a mother, if you as a mother is aware of the necessary things you need to do during the time of pregnancy through delivery, you will make sure you will make sure you do those things and definitely your childbearing process will be easier. A new global target for reducing maternal death is stated that 216 women died for every 100,000 live births. That was in 2015. No woman should die in pregnancy and childbirth. How can women's lives be saved? Most maternal deaths are preventable. And as the healthcare solutions to prevent or manage complications are also well known. But the issue is a lot of women don't know all these things because we still have women who are not enlightened, who are not educated. And as the G3 target 3.1 targets at reducing the global maternal mortality ratio to less than 70 per 100,000 live births. What is needed? What do we do need to make this possible? We need political will and commitments. We need contraception and self safe abortion services for countries that it is legal. We need strong health system. We train health workers and essential medicine. We need improved access to quality care before, during, and after childbirth. We need accountability. Every debt must be accounted and its cost recorded because if every debt is accounted and its cost recorded, it will help us in knowing ways to prevent further occurrences. If we cannot trace the cause, it means it can still repeat itself again. Health and well being, nutrition, education, water sanitation, and hygiene is very important during pregnancy and after because. It doesn't just end at the delivery of the baby. Even when the baby is delivered, the mother still needs to ensure that the right vaccine is taken, the right sanitation is put in place for the well-being of the baby to, in, uh, to avoid infection and other forms of sepsis. Efforts to reach everyone everywhere should be made available. Here is a chart, a pie chart on causes of maternal deaths for complications. The hemorrhage, hemorrhage is 20%, enclampsia or severe enclampsia, 20%, hemorrhage 27%, obstructed level, obstructed level is 10%, sepsis is 24%, anemia is 27%, indirect causes such as HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria is 11%. Preventive and social measures. One of the preventive measures, early registration of pregnancy. Once a woman is pregnant, once a woman is this, um, 
it's known to be pregnant, the woman should be encouraged to enroll for an antenatal care because there are some things that may spring up in the course of pregnancy, such as blood pressure, anxiety disorder. And a lot of women don't even know these things happen. So every woman, and we should ensure that every woman around us takes proper antenatal care, at least three antenatal checkups. Dietary supplementation, including correction of anemia. You know, when you're pregnant, when you see a pregnant woman, you should ask certain questions if the woman is taking the right dietary supplement. It is important because you are not just eating for yourself. You are not taking these things for yourself. You are also taking these things for the baby. A lot of times you see women having deformed children or maybe children with one deformation or the other due to lack of certain important vitamins and minerals in the course of pregnancy. But if a woman is well informed and the right awareness is created, which is one of the things we do at Mommy and I, and that is why I'm so passionate about this topic. If you create the right awareness and women have this on their fingertips, that this is the right thing they are supposed to do in the course of pregnancy, you find out that we will have much healthier babies. Prevention of infection and hemorrhage during preparing, this is very important because even in the course of delivery, if the right care is not taken and if the right medical professional is not handling a woman's childbirth, you find out there are issues of hemorrhage, a woman bleeding excessively to death. This is preventable. If we have the right knowledge as women, we have prevention of complications such as enclampsia, mouth presentation, ruptured uterus. All these things can be discovered in the course of antenatal care. Because as a woman goes for antenatal care, the baby is checked. Is the baby okay? Is the position okay? And if there is anything that is not in place, it is well addressed before the woman finally gets to the delivery stage. Prevention of maternal mortality, non-health related issues. I've talked about the re health related issues. So these are some of the non-health related strategies that can be put in place. One is poverty, poverty eradication. Because of poverty, some women cannot afford antenatal care. They give that as an excuse and they cannot even afford their drugs. So if, if poverty is eradicated in the third world countries, you find out that more women will be able to afford the right antenatal care and take their supplement. We also have improvement of literacy. Like I already stated, if women are more informed, if women are more aware of the right things to do, you find out that they will take better care of themselves because self-preservation is a form of self-care. If you are a woman and you are enlightened, you are a woman in the arena, aware, alert, and you know, you know the right things to do, definitely you will take care of yourself and embrace self-preservation. Women empowerment measures should be increased. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Raja, because your platform has really created a lot of awareness on issues about health. And I really ask the entire team of, um, of your organization, for what you guys are doing because it's amazing. And if we can continue like this, you find out that more women will be informed and more leaders will spread this message across several platforms. Thank you so much for having me. I had to quickly summarize because of our time. Fantastic, well, fantastic Excellency. You have focused on a serious issue, an issue which has to be addressed. But for that, women should come forward Women should come forward into politics. They have to, when women for empowerment comes, who will empower women? That is the question. So women em should empower themselves. Women can empower themselves by becoming great politicians. Because here, whatever the topics you have mentioned, by creating awareness, we can solve so many problems we can solve so many mothers' lives. Really, that's a fantastic through preventive methods, the way you have presented, because it has many solutions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Women should advance. 
women should come uh, come into politics and they have to make decisions because still i don't know about this issue i know it uh, minute level but uh, it had uh, given a broader picture thank you dr esther ji for the wonderful presentation you have given on a serious okay. issue with a serious note. thank you thank you so much now i invite our dear friend dr agastha elizabeth koroman um, koroma from uk parish councillor uh, for chartered register kind uh, public health consultant global speaker other she has been doing wonderful service through our organization sickle cell uh, dr agastha are you there yes she is there yes i'm here you. can you hear me you. yes perfect okay a very well welcome to everyone here today. Um, it's an honor to be here today. And um, I'm so much uh, happy to um, share this platform with all the distinguished guests. Um, thank you so much, um, Dr. Rajat, for having me today, um, all the way from the United Kingdom. Um, if I can share my slides. Uh, I don't know if I can see. Yes, you can share. Right, so, um, I'm just trying to share. Right, where is it? Mm. Yes, oh my God, this is. Okay. Um, see this. There's a problem there, I think. I'm just finding it difficult to um, share my slides at the moment. Okay, where we are, where is it? Can you see my screen? No, no, no can't, no. All right, sorry about that. No, oh. recording in progress. Okay. Not there, is it? Okay, right. Um, I don't think I can find it here. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just finding it a bit difficult to uh, most apologize um, to get my screen um, into place. Um, but it's a pleasure of having me here today. Um, today we're talking about um, um, good health and well-being. Um, we ensure um, healthy lives at all times in our lives. And um, the WHO, the World Health Organization, um, has deliberately um, launched um, the 2030 agenda focusing on tackling um, non communicable um, diseases. Um, it also covers health security um, as um, reproductive system, um, maternal, newborn, um, adolescents, um, health, infections, disease, um, universal health coverage. So um, in order for all of that today, um, I'm just generally going to talk about health and well-being in generally. Um, how can this be achieved in a way? Um, we all have a duty of care in our world. However, you can start with yourself by taking responsibility in protecting and promoting your own well-being. Um, this can be done through choices you make, through holistic care and informed choices. It's so important that we make these choices. Making sure um, your children are up to date with their um, vaccination 
and all um, the things that they have to do in terms of that. Uh, making sure that we are actively in control of our health. It's also very much important. And um, eating healthily. Eat healthily. A healthy diet, as all the people have said as well, will reduce the risk of diet-related diseases. Also, um, there is a growing amount of evidence showing um, for food affects our moods, and it's so important. So what you eat, um, you know, the types of food you eat, the timing of the food, um, things are really um, sensitive in terms of food. Feelings of well-being can be um, protect, protected um, for ensuring that our diet provides adequate amount of brain nutrients, such as essential vitamins and mineral, as well as water. It's so important to drink water. Um, for me, um, I'll say most of the time, I don't, mostly I just drink water. I don't drink or anything like that. I drink water because water is so important um, in dealing with health conditions as well. And um, during our daily lives on everyday activities, we need to drink water. Um, the other thing I want to emphasize on today uh, is mindfulness. Um, be mindful. Mindfulness meditation can be practiced at all times. Um, research has suggested that it can reduce anxiety um, levels, low moods, and all of that. Stress, anxiety, de depression, all of those things can be reduced. Right, and um, the next one is restful sleep. Most of um, us don't find time to sleep well enough. Um, either it can be because maybe we are so, so busy, you know, doing so much stuff, but it's always, always advisable to have a good night rest. Find time to sleep, get enough rest during the day or during the night. If you're working at night, Make sure uh, when you come at home, you rest, you make sure you sleep, have enough sleep because it's so important that we sleep. Physical well-being. Physical well-being for me, what I do always, um, I do a lot of exercise in the morning, like in terms of walking around, um, you know, because I live in a neighborhood where it's really fresh and um, greenery. So I do my walking um, exercise every day because um, I want to feel my heartbeat. I want to feel my happy. I want to um, feel energized in a way. So make sure physical wellness is the ability to maintain a quality of life that allows you to get in a, in a most um, better way in a way. So um, it's so important that we do um, physical exercise in terms of um, either you go to the gym, um, different places that you can do um, that will help in terms of that. So, and um, what are the, I've got few um, eight dimensions of wellness. We have the emotional wellness with the physical I've just spoken about, um, the intellectual wellness, um, which I believe somebody spoke about as well. Um, spiritual wellness, um, spirituality um, can derive from beliefs, um, our faith and um, values, ethics or morals, principles, and that provides purpose and direction in our lives. A healthy spirit helps us to remain resilient and better prepared to face life's challenges. So it's, you know, um, things are so, sometimes you can be very depressed in a way. So, um, so whatever your faith is really in terms of um, spirituality, I'm a Christian, so in most of the time, if I am facing in, um, difficult situations and all of that, um, I pray daily. I pray, you know, daily um, in terms of my prayers and um, it works for me. And so you do whatever works that works for you. But spirituality is so much important. Important um, is wisdom and clarity of visions. It gives you so much um, um, focused in a way, in a mind blowing, um, testimony sometimes when you do um, engage in terms of um, spirituality. Um, emotional well-being. 
which I have touched in a way, um, emotional well-being, making sure that um, you're not stressed. Um, most of the time, um, I'll say that um, we have to be very mindful of the people that are around us, you know, and um, the other speaker was saying that, um, uh, you know, we need to be patient and all of that. Yes, we do need to be, be patient in dealing with ourselves. And um, most of the time, what I always say to my, even my children, um, it's so wise to stay away from anger. Um, anger is a very bad spirit. And whatever life throws at you, make sure um, you deal with the situation. It's how you react to certain things that we create, um, you know, depression, that we um, create anger, that we create um, anxiety. So whatever, you know, you whatever way you find yourself in life, try and find a solution that will ease the tension, will stay away, away from anger. And really, um, what I would say, we must all learn to live with each other, all of us here, because diversity brings beauty. It's so important that we tend to behaviors, um, behavioral health um, in public health is one of the major um, you know, um, issues that is always raised, um, how we relate to one another, because it's all part of health and well-being, how we speak to one another, how we talk to one another, how we, we interpret things, how we perceive things, you know, in terms of, um, you know, judging others in our lives. We need to um, accommodate some things. So it's very, very important um, for us to, to look at these things and narrate it in a better way. And so today, and um, I know I have um, five minutes presentation, which um, I'm trying to juggle around to finish as much as possible. Um, the intellectual well-being, um, which we are doing right here today, in terms of intellecting um, with all, um, each other, you know, talking about um, the um, the SDG goals and interacting with all of us here today. So it's really important um, that we um, get on on things and all of that. Therapeutic care, you know, most of us, most of you, some of you don't know. Um, if you know, um, you have time to do certain things in terms of emotional care, in terms of therapeutic care. So today. Um, I just want to thank you all for listening today with a short speech from here all the way from the United Kingdom. Um, thankful thank to um, everybody here present and to Raj. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's yeah. fantastic. Amazing. Now I invite uh, Hediara Devi Nirvika, an entrepreneur, an LP master practitioner, act therapist, RBT therapist, and mental health advocate. Hediya Nayaji, over to you. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. First of all, my deepest gratitude to Raja Rosa, Caroline, Mom, and Siswa Uni Humanity United International Royal Council for organizing this World Peace Summit, and also all guest speakers. So we have a heard all the amazing presentation and speech from chief guests and also the previous speakers and today my presentation is not going to be each target point of SDG3 that's by United Nations but how in general we can achieve the good health and well-being so now please allow me to share my screen okay is it feasible absolutely Okay, so before I'm going to start my presentation, I want to show a little, a little short videos about how we actually can solve the overall problem of good health and well-being. When you feel off, turn your body on. Lift, run, train. When you overthink, turn your body off. Sit, journal. Meditate. Your body isn't just a home, it's a people. Use it to change yourself physically and mentally. So we are here in order to achieve good health and well-being. We have to be able to 
do skills such as on and off our body because sometimes our body needs to be on and sometimes we need to be off because uh, yeah we have so many activities in our daily basis so we have to understand it and um, yeah next is benefits of well-being i think the previous speakers have already mentioned how it can be beneficial for our physical health mental health and even social connection yeah we know that when we maintain a good health and well-being, it means like we have more energies. And in order to have to be a successful person, we have to save our energy and save it in a place that we need to serve it. Because yeah, when we are not physical healthy, then we're not even going to go outside, for example, or even we can even attend an online meeting. So we have to be careful with it. And when we care about our mental health as well, of course, it's going to boost our well-being and overall and increase our potential for social interaction. Because when we have mental health issues, for example, we tend to isolate ourselves from other people. Maybe we don't want to meet a certain people or maybe we tend to avoid a certain activities, which is maybe stop or avoid us from new opportunities but when we can have a social connection with each other or maybe with new people or even stranger we can open new opportunities which is will be good for our future so first thing in order to have a good health and well-being we have to produce like a daily routine healthy eating habits because yeah when we want to be healthy we have to maintain what we fit on our body and our mind as well first of course we have to consume more fruits and vegetables because yeah when we are having enough amount of fruits and vegetables it can really get bring us the energies that we need throughout the days at, at least you can try a uh, five foods or maybe combine with the vegetables if you're having a daily diet or even in general one food uh, one fruit or maybe one vegetables it's going to be okay rather than nothing at all and next is choose whole grains like bread pasta rice and cereals but one thing we have to make sure in here just because i mentioned in mentioned here about choose whole grains it doesn't mean that you can eat whatever or the amount of pasta or rice in too much remember that even all of this for kind of the foods that i mentioned you have to take care in a good portion you have to be balanced it i mean like you cannot take like maybe too much because you know when we consume too much then it's got it's not going to be good for us next is i think we have to avoid too much processed food such as uh, cookies, chips, or maybe any kind of sugary drinks because yeah, it can really limit our bodies in certain level. And instead you can choose like more fresh fruit, vegetables, whole grains, or even proteins. And last one is choose lean proteins such as chicken, fish, tofu, or even beans and lentils because yeah, it can really give you calories but not in a high level of calories, but they also provide so much nutrition that your body needs in order to really finish your daily activities. So uh, some people might think like, okay, when we talk about healthy diet or healthy food, it might be not delicious or less taste than the other food, but actually not. Uh, I have uh, five examples here for delicious food that still in a healthy way first is grilled salmon with salsa avocado like you can see in the picture here actually not it's not supposed to be with avocado salsa in general grilled salmon is always healthy and easy to serve next week we also have lentil soup or even quinoa salad that can be easily served at home or you can try to make fruit smoothie that i think many people like it or even greek yogurt perfect this uh this kind of food and drinks are really something that you can feel it the deliciousness inside of it but still in healthy way so one thing that we have to make sure in a, in order to make a healthy foods is we uh, we have to avoid too much processed foods just because like we want to have a healthy food doesn't mean it's supposed to be tasteless sometimes we also have to 
taste the food that's still yummy but in a healthy way and you can always check on the internet what other more recipes that you can try at home so next is of course to maintain our good health and well-being we need to do exercise and physical activities like the previous speakers i think most of them already mentioned about this because yeah it can improve our cardiovascular health which is really help us to make high blood pressure not really in risk because when we try to exercise we tend to avoid this high blood pressure because yeah, our body produces the more uh, what we need next is uh, it also can strengthen muscles and bones like as we get older we might tend to have a weakened bones and when we do exercise regularly it can avoid or even prevent the risk of osteoporosis so you can have healthy life and you can still play with the grandchildren or even with your children with your family members in a fun way but we know that when we have osteoporosis problem we tend to avoid several activities because we are afraid maybe we are going to break our bones and so on next of course it's going to help us to control our weight and also boost our moods because when we do exercise regularly it can release endorphins which can balance and improve your mood and of course it's going to reduce the symptoms of depression and anxiety because when we have balance enough mood then even when you got a panic attack or maybe anxiety, your brain knows how to stimulate it in a normal way. Next, it can also enhance cognitive function because yeah, it can uh, reduce the cognitive decline in older uh, in older adults. And the sixth is improved sleep. We know that so many research has shown that when we try to exercise regularly, it can help us to make our sleep pattern better because yeah, your body knows when it's supposed to be relaxed and when it's supposed to be work and rest again. Because yeah, when we have a bad cycle of sleeping, we tend to keep doing it because yeah, I'm trying to take a sleep, for example, six to eight hours, but when we are get busy or life, then we fall into that uh, bad cycle again and we got maybe additional anxiety or maybe stress and so on. So it can also affect our sleep pattern. But when you do exercise, no matter how tired you are or even so much things on your mind, you're going to sleep well at the night because yeah, your body knows how to relax at the right time because you already take enough time to move your body, for example. And of course, with the exercise and any kind of physical activity, it's going to reduce the stress because it can, it, because it can release the cortisol hormone, which is uh, leading to a lower stress levels, and it's going to be good for the overall well-being. Next is some physical activity that you can incorporate in your daily life. When we talk about exercise and physical activity, some people often give a result or maybe reason like okay i don't have a time to go to the gym so that's the excuse or the other excuse i'm too busy and i don't know how to use equipments at the gym for example just to avoid any kind of uh, physical activities but actually not we can simply take the stair instead of the elevator and it's really kind of physical activity that can make us uh in a good health as well or we can try to park the car or any kind of vehicles far away so we can have a time to walk or we can decide 15 or 10 minutes walking or jogging maybe in the morning or after the work or maybe you can simple do a lot of stretching or some yoga pauses in the morning of before but the things that we have to remember that exercise doesn't have to be a chore whatever you feel like there is an activity that you can feel or you can find the joy while doing it as long as it moves your body you can count it as a physical activities that you can you can use it for maintaining your health overall because yeah even dancing or maybe you are doing aerobic yoga it still count as a good activities to maintain your good health and well-being so play with the kids or even pets is also good kind of activities that you can use or 
uh, if you have more time, for example, in the weekend, you can try to go swim or do water aerobic or maybe try to new outdoor activities. But I know like many educators are really busy. So I do really suggest any kind of exercise that they can do at home. We also have YouTube where there are so many million videos that you can watch it at home and in your pace time and your comfortable time and in comfortable place when you want to do it. So we know that when we do practice the good health and well-being, it relates to the mental health because yeah, taking care of mental health is as important as taking care of our physical health. And when we know how good how a good mental health can really help us to fight with our daily stress of life, then I'm sure most of us want to keep maintaining it, maintaining it. But the thing is not really as easy as it seems because, yeah, there are so many stressors in our life and we tend to fall into some cycle or pattern that keep repeating us from that situation. So um, when we talk about mental health issues related to good health and well-being, so many people really face stress and anxiety because of so many stressors in their life or maybe even some kind of fear that they have created in just their mind. So yeah, like uh, the previous speakers already mentioned about mindfulness, it's really great tool that we can try at home because yeah, it's simple practicing in the present moment without judgment because some people really not be able to be present. I mean, like our body in here, but our mind is go anywhere. We don't know. So we can try to do meditation or deep breathing exercise to help calm your mind. So um, many people have misconceived about the meditation, like all religions suggest to do praying to address what we want to the God or maybe to, yeah, just to appraise it or maybe tell what's our problem and so on. We have that prayer time for, uh, I think, for all religions. And when we talk about meditation, it's not only for a certain religion, for example, but meditation, we can take it as a time where our mind really, uh, really calm and relax. So we can hear or we can get inside of what prayers we had during the meditation. For example, I'm Muslim. I'm praying uh, during my praying time. And then when I do meditation, it's simple like being in a present moment and suddenly I get so many insights. So actually it's not supposed to be a specific religion. We still do praying to our God, but when we do meditation, it uh, it's supposed to be a moment where we relax our mind. And we know when we relax our mind, we can get more insights or even new ideas. So uh, this is a real high suggestion. Next is Exercise regularly, of course, like I have mentioned before, when we do exercise regularly, it can increase our endorphins and it can also uh, release the cortisol as well. So we do really need to do exercise regularly. But even though I put in here at least do 30 minutes of moderate exercise, it doesn't supposed to be a whole 30 minutes. Let's say you are a super busy person. You can take 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes uh, before you go to the bed. So don't make it complicated because exercise doesn't do be a chore or just because it seems like difficult, it doesn't mean that you have to do in a difficult way, okay? Next is get enough sleep. Like uh, Professor uh, Augusta already mentioned about it, like we need really a good sleep because when we lack of sleep, we lose our concentration that will simply ruin our day. So next, we can also connect with others. So when we have someone else, like say our support system, then we can help uh, manage our stress and anxiety in much better because yeah, let's say we have a group of a uh, couple people who wants to listen to our problem or maybe who keep sharing stories and let us uh, motivate ourselves by simple listening and sharing the stories because not all people have anxiety and stress want other people to solve their problems. Sometimes they just need someone to listen to them. Okay. Next is place, uh, practice self-care. When we talk about place, uh, practice self-care, it doesn't supposed to be a fancy thing. Just simple find something that you feel you are enjoy while doing it. Maybe it can be reading a book, taking a bubble bath, or simple listening to music. Do whatever you like. 
and being present while doing it. And okay, uh, when we talk about healthy foods and how, or maybe healthy habit eating, we also have to consider about mindful eating, which means that we have to be in the present moments while eating. Because I know like nowadays, even me, myself, I honestly feel like sometimes I'm not mindful eating. We are eating, but we are talking about the social media or maybe we are busy taking pictures or maybe we are simple uh, judge about something else while eating. So we are not fully enjoy the foods that we are eating. So that's the thing that we have to maintain as well. Because sometimes when we are not fully understand about it, we tend to be not grateful enough for what we have. Next, that really important, I think, is limit exposure to news and social media because we live in social media age and we know that some people posted their achievement. For example, if you are not in a good day and if you feel like you are in a happy day, you already feel so tired after a whole day uh, activities and you see and maybe other people post about something that you have desired since a long time, then maybe you can, you can tend to be jealous or maybe don't like it or it just give, uh, just give you additional stress and anxiety. So you have to limit the screen time, both on social media, on the phone, or even on the laptop or computer, because yeah, just to avoid uh, additional stress because when we see so many great things from other people, sometimes when we see it in the good mood or in a good condition, then we can accept it. But when we are in a tired condition, not all people can accept it. So we also have to understand ourselves when we want to jump into it or when we have to take ourselves uh, from it so we are not going to get overwhelmed by screen uh, by uh, spending time too much on the screen or on social media so uh in conclusion maintaining good health and well-being is essential for living a fulfilling life so when we can prioritize our physical and mental health, it means that we can also improve our quality of life, increase our productivity, and reduce the risk of chronic illnesses. Because yeah, one thing that we have to remember that no matter how small the change in your life that you make it in daily, it still can make a good impact if you count it later in the day. So you have to appreciate it yourself no matter how small progress that you have met during the day. And yeah, making self-care priority and taking small step toward a healthy lifestyle is so supposed to be a great achievement for you and a good plan for you because yeah, we don't know as we get older, our environment has changed, maybe the neighborhood and so on, or can it any kind of the foods around us have changed, so we have to maintain it. And I hope all of you can commit to take care of ourselves so we can live our lives to the fullest. Thank you so much for the attention and thank you for listening to me. I'm giving back to Raja Rao, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you so much. It's wonderful. We have given an encyclopedia of him. Really, that's so wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I invite uh, Jackpata Kofiji. Are you there? Last speaker, Professor Dr. Ambassador Marin Miyaji. Over to you. Thank you so much, my dear um, Honorable Dr. Raja Rao and to Dr. Caroline. I have to first give gratitude to both of you for allowing us all to be on the platform today and to be speaking about um, such important topics throughout the summit. Um, thank you to everyone who's also on the platform still. Um, many, many takeaways from so many people. So whomever is listening, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to every one of you. I greet you all in the universal greeting of peace and blessings. It's lovely to see many of my fellow colleagues and speakers, Professor Nada, Sister Herdiana, and everyone else that's here. Thank you so much for being here as well. Topic today, so many takeaways, so, so many takeaways. And I know um, everyone is tired. So being the last speaker, I'm not going to want to actually summarize everybody's points and go over the same thing again. But I would like to just leave with a few questions, I think, for most of us who are on the panel that are educationists and for everyone else who is actually 
listening to us later on. These are questions that I'm going to pose to you as opposed to giving you just answers about everything. I think many of the speakers so far have given you many um, answers to many things already, but I'm going to give you a couple of questions that I will leave with you that you would need to actually sit and decipher for yourself. The first is if you have to look at this SDG we're talking about today, which is the good health and well being. This is, of course, for humanity, not just any specific areas or any specific targets. There's many targets to the SDGs, but not any specific target group. But if you look at just those words alone, every individual that is listening to us right now, what do you define as good? What does good even mean to you? And when you look at the word health, what does that mean for you? If somebody talks about health, what are they defining for you? In most of the talks of today, I've heard lots of us correlate and bring together the fact that the mental health, physical health, emotional health, economical health, all of these things are joined together to holistically give you good health. But every individual out there will define this for themselves maybe differently. So this is why I pose that question to you. What for you is good and what for you is health? And then of course, what exactly does well-being mean to every single person who's listening to us? What is wellness of your being? And if you are an individual out there, ask yourself to assess you right now. Leave humanity, leave community, and just think about you as an individual right now. And if you ask yourself the question, what about my wellness of my being? Do I need to change? for me to actually give myself good health. And when you can answer that for yourself first, then you will be able to answer, how can I really make a difference in assessing the target areas for this SDG to make sure I can effect change to my community? So in essence, what I'm saying is it starts with each one of us. Every single one of us needs to first do that assessment that awareness on ourselves, on what is good health, what exactly are we meaning by our well-being, what needs to change about that for us to bring effective change for us first. That change begins with each one of us and that change you bring to yourself is what will be the catalyst effect for good health and well-being for those around you. So it starts with you, it starts within your family, that grows your community that grows the society, that society grows a nation, but it starts with one. So remember that this good health and well-being is essential, yes. But when I spoke of the awareness right now, it's very, very closely linked to what many of the speakers have spoken about regarding mindfulness and the mindset. And what exactly is that? When we want to create the awareness and when you want to try to answer the questions I have just posed, what are we doing? We're making you think. So what are we linking this SDG 3 to? We're linking it to the SDG, which is about education. And when you decide by educating yourself with your answers to this awareness, when you educate yourself about your awareness of good health and well-being, you're actually going to start to learn different methodologies of how to eradicate the poverty, how to eradicate the hunger, how to bring about good economic growth, so every SDG automatically starts to link itself into each other. And holistically, that is why this summit is so crucial. That is why Dr. Caroline and Dr. Rajar are bringing this summit together and putting us all together to learn about each of these SDGs is beautiful because we're not just focusing on just one. If we, at the end of this, link each of them into each other, we will understand how mindfulness learning about it, creating this awareness is crucial for us to actually get the target to 2030 reach because we are very, very far off from that, even though we have the seven years. But if we pull it together, like in summits like this, and then effectively start to implement change, not just talk, take it back from here, take it into our communities and make the differences in lives, we can definitely still make the target of 2030. So I'm not going to go any further other than to say thank you so much again for the platform. It was an honor to be here and to learn from everybody. We all learn from each other as we grow. Um, but I will leave just those questions. 
what does good mean for you? What does good health mean for you? And what do you have to change about you to create wellness of your being? Because your wellness, your good health for you first is the catalyst for others around you. And that education for that is from your mindset, is your taking the time out, and it's for you to make the change first for yourself, to make the change for others around you. So thank you again, Dr. Raja Rao and Dr. Caroline, to everyone else who stayed on the platform to listen to the last speaker of today. Thank you very much. God thank bless. you, thank you, thank you, Excellency. Thank you so much. Can I ma'am, anything from your side or a word of thanks? Okay. So it's a great day. Actually, I have given my appointments at 10 o'clock, 10.30, 11. I have three meetings after 10 o'clock. I thought that it, the meeting would end at uh, 9.59. <laughs> I didn't expect this, but uh, it deserves. Our time deserves because our uh, meetings will come and go. But uh, this much uh, beautiful subject on healthy topics, really, that's so amazing and wonderful. I have to start with uh, Professor Nadaji. Naraji, you are the special guest and you made the program special, so special. Thank you, thank you so much. Then Solomon Musa, brother, Professor Solomon Musa, thank you for staying from beginning to end. Kudos to your strength, energy, and patience. Really, you are so amazing. Thank you, my dear brother. And uh, Dr. Stephen uh, Timito, brother, thank you, thank you so much for your presence. Thank you so much for joining. And Dr. Vishwanath Panigrahi, sir, Soon we will meet on uh, this platform when your subject comes. But thank you for staying with us, supporting us, joining us. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you, sir. And, uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Dr. GM Archana, ma'am, uh, just we have given you 24 hours before the subject. But even then, you have done a fabulous job, ma'am. Fantastic presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much for your hard thank work. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciation towards uh, government. And our appreciation towards your school, the way you are molding your students, that was so beautiful, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, I appreciate uh, uh, Ijioma Esther, ma'am. You are so amazing, ma'am. I have seen you so many programs uh, and so many flyers and, and uh, on so many occasions on social media. <coughs> you are doing a wonderful job, ma'am. You are doing a wonderful job. Kudos to all your efforts. Is your my Esther, ma'am? Uh, keep up the good work. And uh, Kofi Jakarta, ma'am. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, Hediana, ma'am. You have two fans in my house. My elder son, Prince, and Jason. They follow you, all your videos. <laughs> you make uh, beautiful videos on uh, several aspects. They like it uh, very much. They follow you always. And thank you for the elaborated. That's why I say today you are the encyclopedia. You have begun A and end it Z. That's really awesome. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, Meherin Mia, ma'am, you have given a great ending. The ending which deserves this program because you have covered almost all into, uh, you must have put all ingredients into it and made a wonderful recipe at the end. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. And uh, Sikil Sale Augustus, ma'am, kudos to your wonderful job that you are doing in UK and uh, you are doing on a global level in all these uh, social media platforms. Thank you, thank you so much. Today we have wonderful speakers. I didn't expect, because we couldn't stop them. But sometimes we tried, but we couldn't, uh, because uh, we couldn't get uh, this opportunity uh, to again they speak, but uh, we can spend one hour, then it would be great enough, because in the future there is a day when we talk about all these things. Thank you, thank you all excellencies. We'll meet uh, with a great bang on fourth day with quality education. <laughs>